Hello and welcome to this installation and demo video of the add-on True Depth. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you for downloading the add-on. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and install this add-on. So once you've uh, added to your cart and purchased the add-on, you want to go into your downloads page and just download the zip from True Depth. And then once you've downloaded that, you should have this zip file right here. This is your add-on. So what I would do first is uh, open Blender and then go up to edit preferences, make sure you're in add-ons and then click the drop down right here, install from disk, click desktop and then navigate to wherever you found it. In my case, it's just here. So you can click it, install from disk and then to check that it has actually been installed, you can just go up here, type in depth and you can see that it's right here. Go ahead and save your preferences. And then I just want to show you the add-on itself. But first of all, we just want to do one thing that I recommend. So one thing I do want to say is by default, you are going to have the small model size for the add-on. Now, this model size is really great for most things. Um, it's going to get you really good results for generating those depth maps. But I would recommend going ahead and downloading the large model size this is going to give you the best quality and the most high resolution depth maps now i've already downloaded this um, but what you want to do is when you do click this you're going to see it just here so you're going to see download it from here you want to click this and then you want to go ahead and download this one right here so this is the large um, the add-on itself comes pre-built with the small model um, but you're going to go ahead and download the large one. You can use this one if you want, that's absolutely fine. But for the best results, I would download the large one. Uh, once you've downloaded that, you're going to get this file right here. And then to install it into the add-on, you want to unzip the uh, folder right here. Double click on this. Head on over to checkpoints. And you'll see this is our small model right here. All you want to do is click and drag this over to there like that. Simply get off this. You can delete the old zip and just simply compress or rezip that folder again. Once that's done, you can go ahead and open up Blender again. And we're going to go through the same installation as before. So simply go to this right here, install from disk, head down to that new zip folder and reinstall it once more. Save preferences. And now you should be able to reset Blender, open it back up again. And we'll see that we should now be able to select the large model size. So, what we're going to do is do a few demonstrations. I'm going to go down the other and teach you how each thing works. Um, if you're just working with like a single image and you just want to create a depth map, uh, a depth map from say like just one texture, you just want to click single image. If you want to use a video file to create a depth map from, you click video file, and this here is for batch of images. We're going to do a single image for now. Um, all you have to do is click open. Navigate to uh, a texture that you'd like to use. So in my case, I'm going to use this one right here. This is a statue. So we've loaded up the image and we're going to hit generate depth map. And after just a few seconds, you can see that it has generated our depth map right here. And all you have to do now is click create mesh. If we zoom in right here, you can see that this is our 3D geometry generated from a single 2D image using those AI generated depth maps. Now, first thing you'll see right away is the quality is not great. And this is uh, to simply make it run quicker on your system by default, but we can up the resolution just here. So if you go over to the modifiers uh, panel, and you'll see the subdivision surface already applied to this object here. If you simply just go up in the numbers, you'll see the detail come back. And as you can see, it has captured a lot of the detail in this statue right here. 
Uh, we're going to turn this down just for now, just so it runs quicker on the uh, on the viewport. We're going to go into cycles. Just go into rendered view here and add a light, maybe an area light, just to show the 3D effect happening. So you can see here that the light is interacting and casting shadows on the 3D geometry. And we can do a lot of things. So if we select the object and just scroll down on the add-on, you can see the displace depth slider here. And as you'd expect, this controls the depth of the effect, which you can see there. Um, I usually find that 0 0.5, between 0.5 and 1 usually gives the best results, obviously depending on what it is you're creating a depth map from. And you can see that looks really nice right there. Uh, other thing we can do, as if we scroll down, we can change the coordinates and the sizing of the texture, which you can see here, but this is fine. And if we scroll down to here, this is sort of like your high frequency details in the 3D mesh. So if I just go back into solid view and turn this to zero, you'll see that it looks a lot smoother. And if I turn this to one, you can see a lot more of the finer details starting to come through. Now, I tend to go with about 0.25, between 0.35 as well. That usually gives the best results. And don't forget, we are going to be upping the resolution here anyway. Um, and then down here, you've got the smoothing. Again, I'll turn to zero. And you can see it smooths out a lot of the geometry. So usually keep that between 20 and 30 depending on what it is you're going for. I'm going to leave it to how it is. And then go back into rendered view, and you can see we have beautiful, beautiful 3D geometry. Now, that's pretty much it for the add-on. I just want to show you some other examples on things that the add-on uh, works with. So if I go on to open recent demo examples, you can see a few more of the examples that I've done here. So it works really great with environments as well. So as you can see, we've got this 2D picture of a mountain here, the, the generated depth map and the 3D output. If I just go into rendered view, you can see what we've got here. Now I do actually have a sun right now. And if I just rotate, you can see that the light is casting on the 3D geometry, which looks really nice. You could use this for a ton of things, uh, for background textures, for entire scenes, objects, anything you can think of. I'm just gonna leave that there for now. Again, we've got another one here. This is a castle. Uh, there's the depth map and there's the 3D geometry. If I just zoom out, again, you've got like this island, depth map, and the 3D geometry. So if we zoomed in and worked on this long enough, you can see how you can create entire scenes uh, with a bit of tweaking just within the True Depth add-on. And like I said, it doesn't just work with environments, it works with all sorts of objects, as you can see here. This is like a templed wall, temple door. Uh, there's the depth map, and there is the finished automatic 3D result. And again, we've got some textures here as well. There's the source material, depth map, 3D output. Got a glass orb here, and there's the same again. So you can really see the power of this and where it can come in handy for all sorts of things. And the fact that it runs locally on your device as well is really, really nice. Um, no need to like outsource it to any supercomputers or render farms or anything like that. So another great way of using the add-on is actually using artificially generated images as your source material for the 3D geometry. So I'm in Grok right now, this is on x.com, but you can use ChatGPT, you can use Sora or any other image generation or websites and you can create anything you want. So right now let's put in uh, create a mythical doorway, create an image 
of a mythical doorway. And let's just see what it kicks out. Now, I like this one right here. This one's pretty cool. So let's save that to our desktop. And in Blender, we're going to hit N, go over to the add-on, make sure you're in the large model size, hit open, and find the image we want to use and hit generate depth map. And just wait a few seconds. And there we go. Uh, it has created the depth map. Now all we need to do is click create mesh. Let's scale that up we can see that we actually have something just here. So let's go ahead and up the resolution to see what we're working with. And you can see how it's kept all the detail in that door, which is really, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a area light in just here. Maybe turn the brightness up to something like this and then go into rendered view. Now on a few of the outputs, you'll notice that the textures might look quite shiny. This is set by default, and if you want to change this, all you have to do is click on the object, go over to uh, the material settings, go over to roughness, and you can go into the shader settings and tweak this further, but all I do is take these two colors and make them white. Make sure they're pure white on both of them. Now you can see we've got something like this, which does look really good. We've got all the detail there. We've got everything like the trees and all the detail in the brick and whatnot. So that is pretty much it, guys. Uh, we're going to be rolling out more and more features down the line. And if you need any help, just drop me a message on Blender Market and I'll be happy to help.